Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade nine academic students working on the measurement and geometry portion of the course. This is part two of that unit where we study three-dimensional measurement. And this is the third video of three-dimensional measurement. In the first video, we looked at the formula for volume and where they came from. And then in the second video, we did some volume questions together. So in this third video, we're gonna to start to look at surface area. Okay, so again, on your formula sheet, you have all of these formulas related to surface area. And you can see again that for each of the six shapes on the three-dimensional side, there's information about surface area. And what's important is that you understand exactly what the information is that you're given, so you know what information to use in a particular question. So let's look a little more carefully, piece by piece. So we'll start with the most basic and familiar shape, and that's the rectangular prism, or as many of us say, that's the box. So this over here is what we call the net. Um, it's the net for a rectangular prism. And that's just a fancy way of saying that we took a three-dimensional object and we opened it up to create a two-dimensional picture of what it would look like. So this is kind of, imagine that you took a box and you flattened it out. This is what it might look like. So when you think of a box, you know that there are six sides, top, bottom, front, back, left, right. And those six sides are actually come in pairs. The top of the box matches the bottom, and I've indicated that by matching colors on the net. The front of the box matches the back. Again, look at the colors. Oops. Look at the colors on the net, and the left and the right match each other. So there are two each of three different parts to the surface area of a rectangular prism. So when you look at the formula, the formula says that the surface area is two times um, width times height. So it's saying two times this, and then two times this, length times width, and then two times this. Just be careful that, for example, if you're doing a question in which a box has no lid, then make sure you know which parts to subtract or not use in your surface area formula. So don't forget that that's entirely possible to ask you for the surface area of a box that's missing its lid. So just don't blindly use the formula. It does require some thinking sometimes. So let's look at the next shape. So we have a triangular or sorry, a square-based pyramid. So that's very much exactly what the pyramids in, in Giza are, they're square-based pyramids. So obviously square-based is because the bottom or base of the pyramid is a perfect square. And so we call this side length B. And again, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm tracing over the net of the square-based pyramid, which is again, imagine opening this up and flattening it into a two-dimensional object. So the base, is b squared and then each side is obviously a triangle and the area of each triangle so let's kind of look at it carefully so here's b for base and they've called this s and if you look at the diagram the reason why it's called s is it's called slant height so height is very specifically something else s is either side or slant length and that's the length kind of up this slope triangle part um, so when you open it up however it just becomes the height if you will of that flat triangle so each triangle is one half base times s and if i have four triangles watch what happens four times a half is two bs and that's why when you look at the formula you see this there are four triangles so two bs plus b squared, which represents the bottom. So again, imagine that we had a question where one of these triangles was missing or taken away because it's the entrance to something, then you would have to be able to adjust this surface area formula accordingly to account for the fact that you're missing a whole triangle. So don't just blindly use the formulas, make sure you know how they are composed so that you can adjust them as needed. Okay, so the next shape is a triangular prism. And in this case, instead of a Toblerone bar, I'm showing you a, a wedge of cheese. That's a lovely triangular prism. And so what do we have? Well, again, here's the net. So here it is opened up. We have three different looking rectangles. 
and then we have two identical triangles on the top and bottom. So this triangle is A times H, so that would be A times the height, or if you look at this diagram, A times height, so it's this edge over here. Then we have this edge, which is base times height, and so if I look at my diagram, that would be this front edge facing closest to me. And then over here, this third rectangle, C times height, so that would be the edge that's sort of on the right side of this pyramid. So there's the three rectangles, and you can see them represented here in the surface area formula, A times H, B times H, and C times H. Now the other things that we need in order to get full surface area are these triangles on the top and bottom. And you'll notice each one of them is comprised of a base of B, and this L value, which we now know is what we call the height on a two-dimensional side of a three-dimensional object. Ooh, that's a mouthful. So each of those triangles is one half base times that L. And if I have two of those, two times a half BL is just BL. Oops, BL. So that's where this comes from. So again, um, here it says the area of the rectangles, the area of the base. So make sure that you can adjust it if you had to. Now we have a cylinder. So here's a strange but interesting looking cylinder. It sort of reminds me of Alice in Wonderland for some reason. Um, and this is what a cylinder looks like if you were to kind of open it up. So it's comprised of two circles. So there's the top circle and there's the bottom circle that we can't quite see. Uh, and those are just pi r squared circles. And then the lateral surface or the surface that is around the object is a rectangle if you were to open it up fully. And that rectangle would have an area of 2 pi r h. Now, if you're wondering where this comes from, well, this h is clearly the height of the cylinder. So we've defined it here for height. And in this diagram, it would actually be straight up and down. Um, 2 pi r should look familiar to you as the formula for circumference of a circle, because that piece, uh, that rectangular piece, fits exactly, snugly, perfectly against the circumference of that circle. So you can see what happens as I'm sort of unwinding it is as I detach this from the circle, um, I create the rectangle and I can see now for sure why this side length here is exactly the same distance as the circumference of this circle. So it's very, um, very possible you'll get a question about the surface area of a cylinder that maybe has no top. And if it has no top, make sure you don't include both of the circles. So look at this formula, right? The base is pi r squared, that's one circle. So you would have to, instead of saying two pi r squared, if there was no lid, just do pi r squared. Or maybe if it's open on both ends, so like a paper towel roll that's empty, it's open on both ends, in which case don't include any of the circle parts. Okay, so again, make sure you can adapt the formula to whatever the needs of the question are. So what other shapes are there? Uh, we have a cone. So obviously I've added a nice summertime ice cream cone here to remind you about cones. And if we open a cone up and look at the lateral surface, it looks like this. So there is a circle, right? And the circle represents the bottom edge. Or in the ice cream cone, that circle doesn't exist because otherwise I couldn't put any ice cream into this cone. Um, but if it's a closed cone, meaning that, you know, it's not open at all, then you would have a circle here, and that's right here. And it's also represented right here with pi r squared. And then this here, if you were to cut this out of paper, put some dabs of a glue right here, and kind of roll this, it would become, obviously, a shape like this, in other words, a cone. So the formula, there are two pieces that go into making a full cone. One of them is called pi rs, that's the lateral surface, and then the circle pi r squared. So again, make sure if you're dealing with a cone that has an open side, that you don't include the pi r squared or the circle portion. And then finally, a sphere. The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. It seems like a simple formula. It is a simple formula. Don't confuse it with 4 pi r cubed divided by 3, or don't confuse it with just pi r squared. 
right? It's its own formula. The question is, where did it come from? Um, well, I'm not going to take the time to explain it to you, um, but I will give you this web address. Um, it's a pretty decent and fairly easy to understand um, explanation as to why this formula is the exact surface area of a sphere. So if you're interested, go check this out and yay, it's a Canadian link. So that's always nice to see. Okay, so I think we're done looking at the formulas. And since we're more than 10 minutes into this video, this seems like a pretty decent place to stop. And we'll do another video, um, video number four, where we just do some questions together about surface area. Okay, so I'll meet you at video number four. Make sure you have your calculator, pencil, and some scrap paper. See you there.